time is approximately 7 p.m. and uh, February 15, 2024. Fairview Municipal Planning Commission will now begin. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody. Good evening to those of you in attendance online. I want to thank you all for attending tonight's Fairview Municipal Planning Commission meeting. Um, as you know, we had to skip January meeting due to inclement weather, so I hope everybody <coughs> had a nice holiday and enjoyed some of that uh, snowy weather that we had. Uh, my name is Scott Russ, I'm the chairman that will be conducting tonight's planning commission meeting. Uh, we appreciate that each of you has taken the time from your busy schedules to either attend or view tonight's meeting to observe how our town government works. All Fairgate Municipal Planning Commission meetings are public notice per Tennessee state law. All planning commission meetings are recorded and may be viewed live on Charter Cable 193 and TDS Cable Channel 3, as well as on the official Farragut YouTube channel, and links to the recordings may be found on the Town of Farragut website. Uh, for anyone in attendance, uh, you should be able to pick up a copy of the agenda at the door when you came in tonight or at the table uh, with uh, Mr. Shipley. Uh, if you're not able to attend in person and are viewing from home, you'll be able to see the agenda that is also posted on the Town of Farragut website. For any persons in attendance who would like to address this commission concerning an item on tonight's agenda, please pick up a blue card uh, with Mr. Shipley and write your name, address, and the agenda item number that you wish to comment on. And also, there will be time reserved at the end of the business meeting for resident comments on non-agenda subjects, which also require you to fill out a blue comment card, again, including your name, address, and also the topic of your comments. That said, uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask that if you're able, if you wouldn't mind, please standing for a moment of silence for prayer and reflection to be followed by the recital of the Pledge of Allegiance to our country's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay, at this time, does any of the planning commission have any announcements or recognitions they'd like to make? Um, I do have just one. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that your statement of disclosure of interest to the state are due, I believe, at the end of this month, if you haven't already filed those. Um, that's form SS-8005, and you can file those online at Tennessee.gov. Okay, moving on. The approval of the agenda. Um, Mark, I've established that we have eight members present, and therefore we have a quorum for tonight's proceedings. Um, and I believe we have amendments to the agenda. Yes, uh, the staff recommends approval of the agenda with the modification being made to remove agenda out of number seven uh, at the request of the applicant. Okay, do I have a motion to motion approve, approve the amended agenda? Second. We have a second. Mark, let the record show that the amended agenda has been approved. Approval of the minutes. Mark, are there any amendments to the minutes from the December 21st uh, Planning Commission meeting? Uh, no, sir. Staff recommends approval of the minutes as submitted. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. With a motion and a second, let the record show that the uh, agenda as uh, post or the minutes posted from December 21st meeting have been approved. Um, Commissioners Devlin and Myers abstain. Uh, business items. Tonight, I believe we have six items to review and discuss, Mark, with the removal of item number seven. Yes, sir. So, our agenda item number three, uh, discussion and approval of the 2023 Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation Local Parks and Recreation Fund matching grant for projects for Mayor Bob Leonard Park and the Feed Park. I'm turning this one over to Ron Ostrike, uh, Parks and Recreation Director, and he can review 
this particular item. Evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present this exciting local park and recreation fund grant project to the Planning Commission. As of the 2020 census, the town of Farragut had 23,506 residents and 8,870 households. You all know we pride ourselves on our parks and our programs. We're honored to offer 133 acres dedicated to outdoor recreation. Our parks are a draw from people all over the greater Knoxville area, and likewise our athletic fields are a draw for teams throughout the region and teams across the country when tournaments come to town. We're here to discuss the grant which covers four major renovation points. A dog park at McPhee with a restroom facility, the replacement of synthetic turf for fields one and two at Mayor Bob Leonard Park, ADA pathway work at Mayor Bob Leonard Park, and finally the renovation of sand volleyball courts, also at Mayor Bob Leonard Park. We'll begin this with the most fun project, and that's the dog park at McPhee. The dog park will have a restroom facility. It will have a ADA pathway down to the dog park. And then there will be a fenced-in dog park with elements for uh, pets of uh, dogs of all ages, sizes, colors, options. Um, the restroom will be a drop-in facility, much like we have at, uh, at Town Hall Park. Uh, actually, the same design. Um, we learned a lot in that project, so we'll be dropping that one in uh, the same way, um, but uh, with some modifications to it. You can see in that yellow area, that is the ARPA ARPA funded uh, phase four of McPhee Park. That is the paver parking lot um, that has been approved. We're just waiting for the contract to clear and then that work can begin. Once that work is done, uh, we'll begin the dog park project. I can't see my little whammer here. Um, Dog Park is in that white shaded area, and the restroom facility is in that purple shaded area. Now moving on to Mayor Bob. As I said, we have uh, two of our synthetic soccer fields the rectangular fields that are uh, being replaced, the synthetic turf. So fields one and two uh, will be replaced. Those fields have soccer, lacrosse, football, rugby, uh, Quidditch, if you've heard of that, that's the, uh, uh, the broom game, I guess. Uh, conditioning, picnic games, other stuff that uh, can be used on these synthetic fields. These fields are used 80%, 90% of the time uh, especially during prime time. Uh, we are looking to start this project very soon um, with the replacement or the removal of the turf. We'll be doing that one at a time and then replacing that turf with new synthetic. Mark, can we just advance it for Yeah. There you see fields one and two. The yellow line you see and the green line you see, um, those are ADA paths. The pathway around the lagoon um, will be, uh, that's the third part of the project, will be uh, replaced or all ADA certified uh, all throughout the park. Uh, right now, the pathway leading up to field one from the Harrison Road parking lot is not ADA compliant. Um, but it will be once it's done, uh, so there'll be some regrading. Uh, and as part of this grant, uh, the entire path uh, throughout Mayor Bob Leonard Park will be ADA compliant. And finally, the last part of this uh, four-part project is the renovation of the sand volleyball courts at Mayor Bob. 
So we'll be removing the sand, putting in new drainage, putting the sand back, and doing some other uh, upgrades to the sand volleyball courts. So the impacts in the community, it's our creation of our town's first dog park, additional ADA restrooms, expanded ADA access to the athletic fields, improved safety, and promoting uh, active lifestyles and outdoor recreation. So as far as funding goes, we have received a $2.73 million grant. The McPhee Dog Park is 465,000 of that. The replacement of fields one and two and the ADA path to the benches is 1.8 million. Uh, the ADA path work is 180,000. The sand volleyball renovation is an additional 50,000. So the total budget with contingencies is 2.73 million. And the LPRF grant received is a 50% match. So we received a grant of $1.365 million which is the largest LPR grant that the town has ever received. We also received a $25,000 grant from the Boyd Foundation uh, for their dog park dash program that will also go toward the dog park construction. Our project timeline will be preparing drawings for the dog park and ADA path this spring. We'll be finalizing big documents for the turf replacement also this spring. We'll be awarding bids for the turf projects this spring. The turf replacement will go one at a time. We'll start that in July. Uh, projected completion for that is the end of summer. Uh, we will finalize bid documents for the ADA path in the fall. The award for the bids will be in the fall, and that project will start in the winter and spring of next year. And then we'll be preparing the drawings for the volleyball project, and that will start in the spring of 25. And then finally, after the McPhee Phase 4 parking lot completion, we will finalize drawings for the dog park and the restroom. Uh, and that project is slated to start in the summer of 25, if we can get all this done. It's going to be busy for us. Does anyone have any questions regarding these projects? Well, let me, let me see if we can get a motion to approve first, and then uh, we'll open it up to the commissioners for questions and if there's any comments. Uh, Mark, do you uh, have any comments? Ms. No, sir. Uh, do we have a motion to so approve? Moved. I'll second. So move with a second. All right. Uh, Mayor Williams, would you have any questions or comments you'd like for uh, Ron? Yeah, in the, uh, the restroom area for Dog Park, is that going to have a uh, some sort of a uh, watering system for the uh, for the dogs? dogs? Yes, it will. Okay. Uh, rain barrel too? I'm not sure if we're going to do a rain barrel with that. We can. We can look into it. I'd like to see one like what we've got at the uh, outdoor classroom. Okay. Duly noted. That's all good. Commissioner Pinchock, do you have any questions you'd like to ask uh, Ron? No, I'm not. All right, at this time I'll uh, just open up the floor to any of the other commissioners. Questions, comments? Uh, I, I just have a general comment saying that this is fantastic. Way to go, good work. I appreciate uh, everything you've got put into this and the planning. Uh, it, it, it's really going to be a, both, both of these improvements are going to be huge assets to the town and for future generations. So. Thank you. I have a question. How long did it take for the grant process, for the application and the waiting and the approval and all that? It's a, it's a great question. I believe it started, um, I wasn't here when it started, um, so I kind of took it over a year ago. Um, I want to say mid-22, because um, I started in the beginning of 23. So I'd say mid-22 is when the process began. Um, and then they added to it in mid-23, so we added more to it, and then uh, we were awarded the grant um, in October. Well, we all should be complimenting you and your staff on obtaining uh, okay, uh, 1.2 million dollars gift to us for to do this work. Thank you for your hard work. I only have one copy, and that's a uh, very good job on the scope and, uh, and the schedule. Just have a, some general concern about anything with bidding and awarding these days and what the price will actually come out even below bid. So just to 
just got a little worry about that in this today's environment. We are all very aware of that. So uh, we've had a few projects that we've been a little frustrated with. So um, we are definitely, we have our eye on that ball. What's your level of confidence? Do you feel pretty solid about being able to proceed, you know, bids within our The initial ones, the, yeah. the turf project, yes. Um, ADA, I don't, I don't anticipate that the ADA path work, <coughs> that's asphalt work in grading. I don't see a, a, an issue with that. Um, and then the restroom is a, a company that we've used already, so I, I think we're set up well um, for these projects to, to move forward. Okay, very good. Okay. <coughs> Rowan, does the $25,000 grant from the Boyd Foundation require any naming rights? That are no longer with that. Is that Good question. something unusual with the town of Barry? No, it does not. Okay. That was here before me, too. So. That, that is a great question because previously, about the Woodman Foundation with their um, all of their dog parks, they did have the pet safe for ending on their dog parks. So I'm not opposed to it, it, just, it would be a precedent that we just haven't dealt with in the past. So. Yeah, they moved that from pet safe uh, funding to the Boyd Foundation. So once it switched over, I think they were in the stipulation for the main rights. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you, Ron. And appreciate all the hard work. We know how tough these grants are. Yeah, we're learning new things every day. <laughs> uh, OK, with the. Uh, with a motion and a second on the floor, I'll ask that all those in favor say yes. 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 Noes. No. Noes. Uh, let the record show that agenda item number three has uh, been approved unanimously. And again, thank you for your time, Ron. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, agenda item number four is a request for approval for the Turkey Creek B Line Interceptor Project. First Utility District applicant. Uh, yes, this project is a major cent um, of a little over 11,000 linear feet um, that will be along portions of Turkey Creek, North Fork of Turkey Creek, um, separated into two phases. First phase starts roughly at Turkey Creek Road and will go to Old Colony Parkway uh, in Village Green. And then the second phase will go to the interstate um, I'm going to turn over this uh, project to Edwin Dayton with First Utility District, um, and he can review uh, the rationale for the project, the necessity for it, um, and the overall scope of the work, and uh, hopefully answer any questions uh, that you all may have. The staff is recommending approval of the right-of-way permit for this project subject to the conditions that were included in your staff recommendations that have also been sent to uh, First Utility District. So with that, I'll turn it over to Edwin. Thank you, Mark, and thank y'all for letting me be here tonight. And uh, John, I'll sympathize and commiserate with your effort on the ARPA process. That is the ultimate moving target as challenging as any funding source that we've been a part of. We have two of those right now. So um, I wanted to take just a moment, and I'll do my best to not be long-winded. Um, I think answering why is always a good question with any project we're doing, so I want to make a brief effort to do that, just to kind of identify our approach and our considerations for what we're doing on the project. Um, big picture what we've done across all of our service area, which is Farragut and West Knox County. Uh, we've seen a lot, of, a lot of growth and a lot of high density growth, and it's made us evaluate what improvements are necessary on our side to do that, or to accommodate that. So we've master planned across all of our service area uh, with about 100,000 folks. We've looked at every parcel of land that's two acres or larger, and we've uh, identified the improvements that we think are gonna be necessary and build out to accommodate every open piece of land. And based on that population count and contribution of flow to our system, we've identified what improvements are necessary to support that growth. Uh, that means we're looking at how big the pipes need to be, what pump stations need to be larger, uh, what do we need at our um, mechanical facilities like a treatment plant to be able to accommodate that and still put clean water out to the lake. So as we've identified those projects, there's a cost associated with those and we have uh, 
built a financial model where we're looking as new people are coming in, we we know what, we think we know what it's going to cost, but those cost concerns are, are variable, like you just talked about. But we're coming up with a dollar per customer basis of how we're cost sharing those fees. And our model for doing that is that as developers come forward uh, and they need they need capacity. Um, they're paying their fair share. We're not looking for our existing customers to subsidize the improvements that we're talking about tonight. So that's that's really our model, it is an equitable share for, for the growth of being in the development community, and we share that as we need it. So kind of where we are and where we're going, we have about $25 million in wastewater projects under construction, and we're projecting probably another 30 million on that in the next decade. So we've got some big, Big changes we need to make. Uh, our lines and the big lines in the town of Farragut were put in in the mid 70s, and uh, Farragut and West Knoxville is a lot different now than it is uh, was 40 years ago. Much like driving on Campbell Station Road, and you're always concerned with the traffic. So we're we're trying to plan out to 2050 for what we need based on what's coming, and uh, also solving any of the operational problems we might, might already have. Trying to do that. At so the subject project we're looking at, like Mark said, is our it's our B-line interceptor is what we call it. It follows that Turkey Creek fork um, from Turkey Creek Road up to Interstate 40, generally in that Campbell Station corridor. Uh, we're looking at upsizing that line. Uh, we're looking at doing phases. Our first phase is 11,000 feet, and it goes from Turkey Creek Road to just south of Old Colony Boulevard and Village Creek. We're trying to time the second phase of our work based on, we were trying to time it based on the Campbell Station Interchange Project, and it sounds like that's been pushed out of DDOT's 10 year plan. So um, we will be doing our best to time that effort uh, to match up with that road project and the new customers we have moving into our service area so that we time that well and don't end up doing it twice. Um, some coordination items. Um, town staff has been really helpful working with us. We've tried to have uh, some stakeholder meetings just to gather input from parks, public works, engineering, planning, uh, so that we kind of can bound our project and, and know what we need to work around. Um, our timing is we are hopeful to bid the project, advertise the project for construction April 1st. That is contingent on permits. Um, we're working obviously for the town of Fairgate right away permit. We've got TDOT right away permits. Uh, we have two petroleum pipelines we're crossing and three permits with TDEC. Um, all but one are applied for. Uh, some of them have been applied for as early as late November and we're still working through those. So our precise time to start the job may not be April 1st, but that's our target until we get confirmation that we can get there. Um, appreciate Mark uh, sharing some of the questions in advance so I could help hopefully answer some of those and do it in a big picture way. Uh, we're expecting a one or two year construction project. I've had contractors tell me that they think they can get it done in 200 days. That's awfully tough for me to believe. Um, it's wet and there's some time restrictions in our contract, one of which is Foundry Park. So. I would fully anticipate that it's more like a two-year project, but we've got some bidders that think they can do it in less than a year. If they can, that's fantastic. Um, one of the timing restrictions I mentioned is work in Boundary Park. Uh, I have my footage figured, but I think we've got about 25 feet of that existing line that, that are in an easement in Boundary Park. We've worked with Mark and some of the parks and public works folks, and we are going to constrain our work uh, with no work in the park and no occupancy of the southern parking lot uh, from September 15th through January 2nd to accommodate the schedule for lighting and taking down the lights. One of the, I guess, the things we've been, been discussing with the town is using that southern parking lot as a staging area for the, for the duration of when we're working in the park. It's 2,500 feet, so it will uh, we will be there for a little while. We bound our contractor from being in there during that time. Um, as a condition for using the parking lot, 
we will be proposing to mill and overlay the entirety of the asphalt and that section of the parking lot and access road to that. <coughs> and we'll be releasing a section of easement that won't be used as a result of going through the parking lot. Mark, you're welcome to jump in. I think I missed anything on there. Please do. And we'll be restriping it. We, we will do that once construction in the park is over. Uh, we will do that outside of the contract, probably using PRI. Uh, they've done a lot of payment restoration for us. And we'll have it restriped to match the existing condition. There are um, several road crossings, like you'll see in your, uh, your packet. The three most significant crossings we have are South Campbell Station, North Campbell Station, and Kingston Pike. Fortunately for schedule, mess, and budget, we're able to reuse the existing crossings. Um, and we don't have to do any work in there, so that will move our project through faster. We've got existing steel casings under this road, under those roads, and we're able to reuse those. Uh, we do have two minor, well, Turkey Creek Road is a more major road crossing. Uh, we've got a traffic control plan um, included in your plan set. It's a very similar scheme to what we did when we had to do a total closure on Turkey Creek Road during the Concord Road widening project. So it's the same engineer, same scheme, and we expect to do that as night or weekend work to avoid school traffic, commuter traffic, that kind of, that kind of impact. And we have a second or minor road crossing in Rustfield that would require open cut construction, and we've worked with Daryl Smith on casing pipe requirements backfill requirements and details for how to repair asphalt according to the local road standards. So we do have all that included in our plan set and specifications at this point. Um, some of the things that we're working towards now, um, working on getting final plans, we're working on getting permits, we're working on obtaining easements and we have contacted all property owners that would be affected by the line work and we would need an easement from. There are just a few, but we have been sending them letters and copies of the documentation. And we've done some representative appraisals through there. So that's work in process for us. Um, once we're permitted, we will be making uh, public notice through direct customer emails, phone calls, uh, social, net social networking, uh, and mailers if need be. Mark could identify some greenway impacts that he'd like us to take a look at. We're certainly happy to accommodate any access, signage, or payment details uh, that, that need to be taken care of. That was a lot. I said I wouldn't be long with it, but I was. And I hope I didn't ramble too much, but I wanted to catch some of those questions. No, that's fine. I have to just two things, Mark. Um, one, just uh, for the record, you give us your name and your address. Sure. Uh, Edwin D. First Utility District, yep. 122 Durwood Road, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, great. And Mark, I was going to ask too, do you have any other slides that you want to review before I open uh, to ask for a motion and then open up for discussion? No, the, I don't have any other slides, and it's a little bit hard to see in this kind of presentation because it's a very, obviously, a very linear project and very detailed. Yeah. Um, the, the, the great majority of the work we're doing, 95% of the footage is in private utility easements. Um, the only work in public right-of-way is three road, main road crossings that we're reusing, uh, and then the cross it of Turkey Creek Road and Rustfield. 95% um, of the footage is in an existing first utility easement. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and ask for a motion so to move. approve with the subject to this following that staff recommends. Uh, we, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Mayor Williams, would you like to open up the discussion? No, matter of fact, he's covered it pretty well. <laughs> I got a few questions. Uh, Mr. Green? Um, I spent a lot of my career on big projects, and this one does, doesn't look very real complicated. I mean, you're getting a, a trench and put some pipe in it. But the logistics and the impact on the property owners and on business owners and on traffic and all that looks like it has an opportunity, a lot of opportunities for problems. 
for example, I guess you get aggregate to go in all the trips, right? So you got to have truckloads of aggregate coming in. And I noticed some of the, the some of the uh, the routing is quite far away from the road, so I'm not sure how you get from the road to where you got to bring in the aggregate and to bring equipment across pieces of property. That's one thing I thought about. The other thing is, I would expect is there some fair amount of tree removal involved in some of this property? So how does that work? Are you chopping down trees on private property or? Well, again, most of this is in a utility easement, and a good bit of the utility easements we already maintain with bush hogging. So I mean, that's that's something we do and should do for keeping our easements clear. So if we do have a maintenance issue, we have access to respond. So um, I hope we don't have a whole lot of trees. There's certainly brush and yeah, I weeds and grass. Some of these about, right. I would expect. How wide are these trenches, by the way, roughly? Uh, it's a 15 foot wide easement. The biggest lines we have are on the southern end and they're 30 inches. So you're probably every bit of a five foot wide trench. Okay, so you got a two mile, five foot wide trench. So. And fortunately, <laughs> most of it's been dug before. So that means we should get through it faster and not have as much yeah. rock. Now do you have the piping laid out, proposed? Uh, I, mentioned, I heard you mention the one by the park there, but it's every, that's every, that's probably that's every section that you've got blocked out on the diagram that probably needs a staging area. Mm -hmm. Certainly the big chunk through the park is a half a mile and uh, it would be staged out of the southern parking lot and we would be obligated to repair it. Um, we have a parcel that First Utility owns on the corner of Turkey Creek Road and Concord Road. It's small and not big enough to stage the whole job but, but can be something we can use on the very southern end and for access through there. And we've reached out to three other property owners uh, to try to negotiate a lay down area. And I don't want to use names, and we're, we're having mixed success, but one of them looks pretty promising at this point. And beyond that, it's not often we provide a staging area to the contractor, uh, right or wrong. Sometimes that's a means and method of where can you get access and how do you get the work done. Yeah, uh, I commend you on the project. I mean, it sounds like you're looking forward, and it sounds very. It just sounded like there was an opportunity for an impact on the community uh, with traffic and with the trip, uh, equipment moving in and out, materials in and out, and all that kind of stuff going on. I know this item. Uh, what was it? Item three of the subject twos here. We're going to have meetings. You're on board. With meetings for each segment of our work with the town to go over the plan for that particular segment. I missed that one, but yeah. certainly, I mean, we'll have monthly progress meetings and we can invite town staff to the meeting if needed or this special I'll, meetings. I'll read this one to you. Prior to initiating work in each section, that's each of the little squares, a right-of-way permit and pre-construction meeting with the town, of, town staff will be required. Some locations may require tree protection fencing in addition to silt fencing. So are you familiar with that? What was familiar with the erosion control uh, requirement. I, I did not notice town meetings by section. Um, well, one, of the, one of the questions we ask folks is, are you okay with the subject to us? It sounds like you may not be familiar with all the subject to us here. So. Uh, I, I did not notice that subject to I read through that and caught the erosion control and tree protection question. I did not catch where you want to have So you, you're familiar with these? Just, you're okay with all these subject to us here? There's 12, there's 12 of them? Mark, tell me your, before I say yes, tell me the explanation of what you're asking for on the meetings by section, because I mean, we, don't, we don't have project sections identified, they're just sheets cut on alignment with match lines. Let me get back at it. Certainly we're under your, um, jurisdiction on dealing with anything, uh, dealing with anything in a public right of way, in any kind of road crossing, uh, both, both yours and TDOT, depending on who the jurisdictional authority of that section of road is. The rest of it, I think we're pretty tightly bound by a TDOT individual aquatic resource permit, um, a TDOT SWIP, and, and our plans review. Uh, I'm I not sure I understand what, what yeah, the let me get to is for meeting my section. My computer's I, being I think it's partly very finicky. What the impact is on that particular section that you're going to be working on over the next week or two weeks or whatever. Not just you, but your contractor. 
the contractor is not reading any of this. Okay. So somebody needs to sit down before he does some work and say, you know, this is what you gotta look out for. We don't want we don't want you running over this guy's parking lot with a truckload or whatever. You know, so I think it's just a coordination meeting to make sure that the town proper and the residents of the town know kind of know what's going on and that the people are aware of the poss possible impact. So I think that's kind of what we're we're asking. So when we we're vote for approval here, we're approving all these subject too, so that, that it's that you're committing to, okay, and that we're committing you to. So well, I guess we need to know that you're comfortable with all of this. I think I just need to understand what you mean commit by section. I don't know if you're asking about the plan sheet for working a private easement. Uh, is that, that's second. not a right of way permit. What, what I understood by this yeah, is I can explain that. On the, well, it's such a linear project, you're going to have to do it in sections. And my computer's completely zapped, so don't pay attention to the screen because there's nothing up there. Mark, were you considering um, the section to be one of the, what I call a segment, from match line to match yeah, line? Yeah, it, it could be roughly that. that. Just I'm thinking, I think, a little smaller than that, like what's the next day's plan? No, I, I think what they meant here was though you had a drawing there with each little section that's labeled on your on your construction drawings. And I, I'm just presuming that's kind of what they're, they're thinking. I don't think it's that formal. But I think they wanted, you're, you're going to break the work into some logical work sections. And I think they want to kind of get together with each set kind of work section and try to make sure everybody knows what the right hand is, what the left hand is doing, and the town knows what both hands are doing. Yeah, but you were describing something on a more the whole segment might take you know multiple weeks but you were describing something that well, I'm just reading that so I'm just I'm just reading out of here. Well it's just what is the word of the section? <laughs> well I presume on the map on the show that drawing again with all the little blocks on it there. Yeah hey, let me get my computer. Cut sheets at <coughs> we, that's what we're yeah. referring to each section kind of the cut sheets what they're saying I presume yeah. that's what they were talking about up there. All, all we're really talking about there is this is, this is pretty common with subdivisions. Is if you've got a really large area, you're going to obviously only work in sections of it at a time. And what what we would do is for those sections, we would we would want to have a pre-construction meeting. I would imagine um, that would coordinate with town's engineering staff and first utility district just to <coughs> check all the fencing. Uh, the, if there's a construction entrance needed or any any kind of logistics signage, um, barricades, you this, know, all uh, those kinds this of things. Is an honest question for me: Does the town inspect the erosion control, or is that the TDEC Knoxville? We office? do inspect that. TDEC may also for this kind of project, but we definitely would be doing inspections of the sill fencing and tree protection fencing if you need any tree protection fencing. Uh, but obviously what I'm talking about is you're not going to go in and put a bunch of silt and tree fencing in the whole project. You're just going to take it section by section in manageable, manageable sections. Sort of start from, from the south and Turkey the Creek Road, yeah. We'll be great if we do 50 feet a day, so it will be slow moving uh, by section. Um, I think I misunderstood your question. Um, we're happy to involve the town if you'd like to attend our monthly progress meetings uh, as a stakeholder, that's uh, I just, if, that, if that's the question. I think that would be a good idea from the town's perspective because it, especially with the parks, uh, the outdoor classroom and the Founders Park, um, and then a couple of streets that would be bored and hopefully our uh, open trench cut in Rustfield and the uh, Old Colony. Um, I think from our perspective, it would be good for us to have somebody to work with you all so that we're aware of everything that's going on for the project that's coming through the town. Um, and that way we can, you know, coordinate that with you or help you if we need to do anything on our end to, to facilitate the project. Obviously, the Founders Park is huge for the town because we want to ideally um, minimize the amount of time that it's affected. You know, and if you can get out quicker than the January to September time frame, obviously that would be ideal for us. So, Certainly the contract particularly through that section, yeah, we'll so. want to we'll want to really uh, work closely on on that section, and then and on the walking trails. There's a lot of our walking trails that could be impacted uh, by the project, and we just want to 
you know, make sure that we're coordinating all that work if, and closing trail sections that we need to just so the public's safe, you know, and they're not going into areas that are actively under construction. No, that's, that's very fair to work together in protecting the greenways, certainly any public road crossing and any work uh, in Boundary Park, their mission property, and don't have any objection with that. And, and I think the biggest way to solve this and, and still meet the intent of that item number three is just extend an invitation to the town on those monthly uh, pre-construction meetings or construction meetings, and if the town wants to send a representative, they can. Um, if, if they decide not to, then they can decide not to. I think the staff can work out whose email address you should put on the invitation, and, and um, that way there's, if, if when they, as you're moving from south to north, if there's areas of particular concern, then the staff can get involved. If there's areas that, hey, they covered last month, or it's rained for four weeks, there's no reason to show up here. So that's the answer, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Commissioner Green, does that, does that satisfy yeah, your answer to the question? Basically, I just want to make sure there's a dialogue between the town and the yeah. construction project. Sure. Very, very similar to what we do with the cable codes when they open the train. Yeah. Well, before we uh, close the discussion, are there any commission, other commissioners have any questions or comments for Edwin? I've got a, a quick uh, statement. Uh, Edwin and the and Versatility has been a great community partner since the town was founded and I support the project. I will be abstaining on this particular vote. It does cross my arm and Versatility has been very transparent with uh, what they're doing and, and again, I do support it. However, I'm going to abstain on the vote. Newly noted. All right, with that one with a motion uh, that has been seconded on the floor. I'll ask if the motion stands as presented with subject to. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Um, can I get a second on that? Commissioner Meyer, that stands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. Let the record show that the request for approval for the Turkey Creek D line interceptor project is approved uh, with a vote of seven yes, one nay. Or abstain. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item uh, number five, discussion of public hearing on a request to amend the future land use map and the comprehensive land use plan update for the property located at 209 North Watt Road from Parks and Recreation to Commercial. Uh, the applicant is Deborah Wilkerson. This item was discussed at the uh, <coughs> uh, December Planning Commission meeting as a workshop discussion. Uh, basically, this is uh, a request to make a future land use map consistent with a pending uh, rezoning request for this property. Property has gone through the board for first reading um, for rezoning from R1 uh, to C1 general commercial. Um, the property's future land use map designation is parks and recreation. Um, and that really came about from the Watt Road uh, community uh, input workshop that we had few years ago uh, where some of the properties that abutted Mayor Bob Leonard Park were given a parks and recreation land use designation as potential areas for the park to grow um, and uh, so that was kind of the rationale for the current land use designation for this tract. Um, the requested change to commercial land use would be consistent with the C1 zoning uh, request and also consistent with uh, properties to the south um, of the, of the uh, particular uh, location here uh, and the general plan of development um, abutting this uh, particular track. So the staff does recommend approval of the change to the future land use map that is shown in resolution 23-13. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Okay. Uh, Let's start with the, we have a motion to approve. Move motion to approve, approve resolution 23-13. Second. 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 Mark, you don't, do you have anybody signed up to speak to address this issue? No, or sir. A resolution? I do not. <clears throat> Who was the second on that? Is it Ed? Ed. I 
have no questions. Thank you. I think we do pass this one out as a board workshop discussion. So, if any of the commissioners have any uh, additional comments, we'll talk about this. Now. Mr. Chairman, I hate to do this to you guys again. The, um, the, I'm the broker of record for the Wilkerson family. I will be abstaining from this particular vote as well. What are you doing here? I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, with uh, no further discussion and a uh, motion second on the floor, I'll ask that all those in favor say yes. 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 No, so let the record show that uh, the Myers of Sanks. Uh, uh, amend, amended future land use map and the comprehensive land use plan update for the property of 2 and 1 Watt Road for, from Parks and Rec to commercial is approved with a vote 7 yes and 1 abstention. Thank you all very much. Thank you Thank for coming you. tonight. Thank you. Moving on to item number six, uh, discussion and public hearing on a site plan for tire storage enclosure and bollard barrier at the Firestone Complete Auto Care, 11 to 15 Kingston Pike, applicant SGA design group. Uh, this particular item came about from uh, some property maintenance. Um, matters that the town has been addressing at this location. Um, there have been some used tires that um, have been piled up uh, outside of the building um, and also some cars um, that in the past have been parking uh, on the north end of the parking lot in the grassed area um, which was not designed for parking. Um, so we have been communicating with the applicant uh, to try to address these items and that's reflected in this particular site plan. Regarding the tire storage issue, they're proposing to construct a, a brick enclosure. Uh, it would be just a designated space to put the used tires. It would be on the north side of the building and the northwest part of uh, the site, roughly 10 feet from the property line. And then um, they would be uh, preventing cars from entering the grassed areas to the north by the installing 10 bollards along the north edge of the parking lot. Um, and that should take care of that particular issue. We did ask the applicant if they felt like they needed to add more surface parking and uh, they did not feel like they needed to do that. They had some extra cars on the property, particularly during COVID. It was kind of a unique situation that they ever had to deal with. Um, and then also, as part of this site plan, they're addressing an existing deficiency with the dumpster enclosure. Uh, they are going to be uh, adding uh, new gate doors to the enclosure to bring it into compliance. Uh, so those things are what's reflected in this particular site plan, and we appreciate the applicant working with the town to get these matters rectified, and the staff recommends approval of this site plan subject to coordinating the site work with the town uh, and obtaining any necessary building permits. I think it's mostly going to be from the fire inspector, just making sure that he's okay with uh, what's being proposed since we are storing tires in this particular structure. So with that, I'll, if anyone has any questions for me, I'll be happy to try to answer those. Okay, well, first of all, let's go ahead and uh, I'll ask for a motion in a second. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Okay, Mark, we don't, do we have anybody signed up to uh, speak on no, this sir. topic? No. no. All right, I'll turn it over to you. If, uh, yeah. Do you want me to take the signing off? Covered it. Cover it. Yeah, yeah. If you would, uh, just give us your name and your address real quick. Yeah, so, uh, my name is John Savina. I do work for Firestone. Um, I reside in Oneida, Tennessee, so my address is 520 Shield Mountain Road, Oneida, Tennessee. Um, Mr. Byers, would you like to open up any questions or discussions on this project? I don't have any questions. I appreciate Firestone's willingness to address some of these compliance issues and, and uh, kind of deal with some of the issues that y'all had over the years. We appreciate the business that you brought to the town for many years. And you've been a, a good business partner in the town, and I've used your services personally and appreciate you guys. Very good. Thank you. Commissioner Devlin, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask or comments on this project? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, I'll open it up 
to the rest of the commissioners. Commissioner Green. I have one question. Um, when I went down just to look at the property, it looked like you have two dumpsters out there. One in the dumpster container and the other one sitting in the parking lot. Is that going to go away? <laughs> one inside the pretty dumpster and one sitting in the parking lot. That's our intention is to have it in the enclosure. I'm not sure to the second one and when that was there, but that's it's been there for well, I, I've looked at it prior to the January meeting it was there, and I just checked before I got here this meeting, it's still there. So apparently it's a permanent thing that's not the parking lot there. Yeah. So you have two dumpsters. So I guess I would recommend is get rid of one or make a bigger dumpster enclosure, I guess, than right. the other. Yeah, the dumpster in the parking lot is one that has to be removed, obviously, because it has to be within the okay. enclosure. Right. So, other than that, I have no questions. Thank you. Are any other commissioners have any comments or questions? And then, no. Thank you. So you, you're, you're okay with that, Mark, then just the way it is without um, adding any additional verbiage for the dumpster enclosure? I mean, if they feel like that they have, and that was also a question that the staff asked the applicant, not necessarily the gentleman here, but the fire center general, yeah. if, if they needed to expand the existing dumpster enclosure and Apparently they don't. Feel like they do. um, so I'm not sure if part of what they're storing in that that second dumpster is are the used tires potentially uh, that this storage area would take care of. Um, but they obviously can't have a dumpster just sitting Sorry. out unscreened okay. in the parking lot because that would be a property maintenance okay. issue. John, what we're saying is that if there's an opportunity, this is the opportunity to want to enlarge the dumpster enclosure to meet whatever needs that y'all have, whether it's the recycling side or the refuse side, this would be the time to do it. My understanding when I looked at the plans, it looked like that you, you could accommodate all that, but again, we, we want to get you into the clients as much as possible. And so these are some things to think about. If, if this is news to you, you may want to go back and you know, talk to your store manager and figure out how to deal with this. And, uh, again, the easiest way to do it is while you're doing this construction is to accommodate all your needs that you have for any kind of whatever's getting, whatever disposal items that you have to be able to get inside a dumpster enclosure. Right. Yeah, no, fully agree that the dumpster's not adequate to be sitting on a parking lot. And, you know, I don't think that they need two dumpsters. Most of our stores do not need two dumpsters. Why they have to, I, it's just something I can't speak intelligently to right now. Um, if for some reason they do, I would ask that we could modify this plan and three percent for approval. And you need drones? Yes. Updated. Yes. Actually, how do you deal with, I mean, you, you deal with a lot of tires that have to be recycled or disposed of in some manner. And that, that's one of the things that we're trying to address as part of this is, is to all the we call it the used tires, trying to get those where they're, they're out of sight. Um, so how do y'all normally, is that, do you, do you have somebody come by and pick them up twice a week, or? We do we have a uh, tire recycling company that we partner with that comes in. It really depends on uh, a couple of things, really how many, how much business the store does, how many tires they're you know, replacing. Uh, some are monthly, some are weekly, some are uh, twice a month, so it really just depends on the business demands. This particular store, I believe it's weekly, the, the pickup, um, but that can fluctuate throughout the course of the year based on sales periods and things like that. So the design plan would be more than sufficient. That, that's what we want to do. Yes, it's it more would. than sufficient. Okay. All right. Uh, with discussion completed, um, lasted, uh, let's see, we have a motion and a second, um, with subject to, uh, for acquiring the building permit. I'll ask for a vote. Um, all those in favor say yes. 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 No. No no's. I'll let the record show that agenda item number six, uh, Site plan for tire storage enclosure and bottle barrier for fire stone auto care has been approved unanimously. Thank you, Thank you John. Appreciate it. Thank you. Agenda item seven has been removed. Uh, agenda item number eight is request for approval for the installation of 650 linear feet of two inch gas line. 
along a portion of Boring Road and Boring Lane to service the residents at 217 Boring Lane. Applicant is KB. Yes, this project uh, will initially start on Boring Road, kind of where it has a turn there going, you know, goes due north and then turns to the west, basically in that intersection. And then we go under Boring Road, they'll be boring under Boring Road. Um, and then following the south side of Boring Lane, um, along the frontage of 204 Boring Lane, ultimately to service the residents of 217 Boring Lane. Um, since this is a new uh, gas line, um, it does require the review and approval by the Planning Commission. The staff has reviewed this right-of-way permit and is recommending approval subject to the two conditions of obtaining the right-of-way permit <coughs> from a town's engineering department, which involves coordinating erosion control, traffic control if necessary, and then notifying the affected residents along this section of work. So with those subject to the staff recommends approval. Okay, thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mark, is everybody signed up to on this no, item? No, sir. <coughs> motion and motion clarification. Motion to conclude the two subject to um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll break that up on the final word when we come around after the discussion. Mayor do you have any comments for the applicant? Questions? This is all going to be boring. Excuse me. Very good. Uh, if you would, can you give us your name and your address, please, and then I will for further discussion. It's uh, Colton Watson, KEB, at 4505 Middlebrook Pike. Uh, thank you, Cole. Do you have anything to add as far as, uh, in addition to the discussion that Mark brought up, or description that Mark had? Nothing particular with that, just that uh, we are rerunning this service due to a uh, lightning strike at the property. So they currently have a CNG trailer set up so they are able to be serviced. So it is a priority for us since we've only got two CNG trailers yeah. to service the county. Thank you, Colton. Uh, Mayor Williams, do you have any questions for the applicant? Yeah, what, uh, what property was lightning struck? I believe it was 217. That was on the okay. east end of the dog. Commissioner Meyer, do you have any uh, questions for the applicant or comments to make? So we talked about some directional boring. I assume you're going to do some open ditch as well, you know, trying to do the tie-ins. Any other open ditch that we, we need to be aware of? Or is, is it just one or two property owners is actually going to have anything kind of going on in the front yard is what I'm saying. Actually, it used to be one property. I think it's, it was subdivided as of years ago, but it still may be the same property owner. That's on the south side of Boring Lane. Yeah, it's two of four. <clears throat> That's the south side of Boring yeah. Lane. Yeah. It's mostly just that one property owner that would be more affected. So are you seeing any, are you, are you envisioning any kind of open ditch there? No, other than the tie-ups, just the... Uh, Directional drilling and then okay. tying up the open ditch. You are aware that there's going to be a school up there? I was not aware of that. Now, not quite that far back, but over on kind of the, the southwest side. Southwest of that corner. Yeah, this is not a line that is designed for that. This is just okay. service related. I mean, it's not a service line, but it's certainly not a sufficient line for the school. Do any other commissioners have any comments or questions for the applicant? I think that's a no. Colton, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, we've got a motion on the floor that's been seconded with the with the subject to, so I ask for a vote now. All those in favor say yes. 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 Noes. No noes. Mark, let let the record show that uh, request for approval for the installation of 650 linear feet of two-inch gas line along. Portion of Boring Road and Boring Lane, servicing residents at 217 Boring Lane, has been approved unanimously. All right, moving on. And Mark, do we have any uh, residents signed up for comment? No, sir. 
Okay, um, and Mark, do we have any uh, utilities? We still have one more oh, item on the yeah. yeah. tree, tree, tree ordinance. Yeah. Tree ordinance. Just a, Uh, number nine, discussion of public hearing on amendments to clarify certain definitions provided for in the Town of Farragut Public Tree Care Ordinance. This is a, represents a minor change to the Town's Public Tree Care Ordinance, which was adopted in February 2022. We created the Public Tree Care Ordinance um, as one of the components that's required for Tree City, and I would, I'm unofficially announcing that we were just granted a few days ago finally after many years of trying uh, tree city designation so we hope to do something later this spring uh, more formal to acknowledge that i received the signs they're propped up against my the wall in my office so i'm very excited about this and uh, so that's a little uh reason why we have the public tree care ordinance and really the intent of the public tree care ordinance was to establish some parameters for tree planting uh, on public property tree care uh, on trees that are on public property or trees that are in um, private easements but they're um, like walking trail easements where the town has the responsibility of maintaining the trail and then potentially trees that are planted along the trail for benefit for the benefit of trail users. Um, so one of the definitions in the in this ordinance that's obviously very important is the definition of what is a public tree. <coughs> and currently um, it's a tree that's growing on land owned by the town of Farragut. And it would also include trees situated within walking trail easements and those are on private property uh, that are maintained by the town of Farragut. Um, one of the things, and street tree is also a definition that is tied to the definition of public tree, so that's why we also include this in the particular um, amendment that's being proposed at this time. Um, the main reason that this is being presented is um, recently a, a, an issue came up regarding the maintenance of trees. Um, in this case, they were actually trees that were planted by a developer in, in an older subdivision um, within the town's public right-of-way. Um, and um, it's trees that have been uh, you know, planted for the benefit of this particular subdivision. And this is frankly common in a lot of our older subdivisions where a developer uh, initially gone in and planted um, what would now be considered streetscaping uh, trees uh, within public rights of ways to help beautify their um, subdivisions. Um, so and we also see that like on Parkside Drive where a developer uh, went in and, and heavily landscaped the medians uh, in the middle of Parkside Drive, which are on town property in the middle of our public right of way. Um, so, in, in looking at the definition of public trees that we have right now, it's pretty broad. Um, and so one of the representatives of this, of this particular subdivision understandably felt that since the trees in question here were planted in the middle of the boulevard, they're on our property and thus they were ours to maintain. Historically, those trees and other trees um, in similar situations have been maintained by the homeowners associations because that's who they benefit and we didn't require them to be planted nor had any review of the trees that were planted uh, to you know provide feedback as to whether we felt they were appropriate for the location so in looking at that i think a good point was made with that definition <clears throat> and um, so we went back and kind of revisited that and on the screen there, I have the existing definition of public tree, which I read earlier. And then I had originally had a, an earlier definition of a revised public tree, and then it's kind of one of those terms that the more you think about it, the more 
scenarios that you come up with <laughs> that really probably need to be captured. So this particular, although lengthy, um, and this could be just for discussion, we don't have to necessarily take action on this if you're not comfortable with it. But this particular definition that's on the screen is intended to um, basically, again, clarify that public trees for maintenance and the way that they're applied in the public tree care ordinance, which is mainly dealing with maintaining public trees, um, that it would be considered a public tree if it has been planted by or required to be planted by the town of Perry. The reason for that is if we're requiring it um, or we do it, we have reviewed it uh, like we do with streetscape plans for newer subdivisions. And so we look at whether the tree that they're proposing in the location they're proposing it is appropriate and we don't end up with large shade trees uh, in a three foot grass strip that has to be dealt with, you know, later by the town and by homeowners associations. So um, that's the intent of that first part. And then secondly, <coughs> uh, talking about the walking trails, that's just clarifying that those would also be considered public trees, even though they technically would be on private property within a walking trail easement, but those would be ones that we would maintain. And then thirdly, a public tree shall not include trees planted on land owned by the town of Ferry that were approved as part of a development plan to be maintained by homeowners and or property owners associations. A couple of examples of that would be Parkside Drive is one of them. We never maintained the trees in, that me in those medians. We didn't require them to be planted, um, frankly, probably would, wouldn't have recommended some of the trees that were planted in there. Um, so those were set up uh, as part of the development plan to be maintained by the Property Owners Association. All the entities along Parkside Drive contribute financially toward the maintenance of those trees because they benefit most directly the businesses and, and entities that are fronting along Parkside Drive. And then in terms of the homeowners association, a good example came to my mind with the cottages at Price Farms. There's those large rain gardens right in the middle of the town's right of way. We've never maintained those and those were set up to be maintained by the homeowners association. Just like the little sidewalk that runs through the middle of part of those rain gardens, that is one that is maintained by the homeowners association. So that was kind of the intent of that last part of that definition was to capture those kind of situations where you have a development plan uh, that has been approved by the town but it specifies that the maintenance is to be by entities other than the town so that's basically what i'm proposing as the new definition of public tree uh, although it is longer than i would like uh, but Again, I wanted to get your all's feedback if you're not comfortable with it or if you have other items that you feel um, need to be addressed or clarified, we can certainly revisit that. I think one of the other questions was um, even trees that uh, wouldn't fall under the public tree definition necessarily as proposed, if they do fall across the street, we still maintain those. We get them cut up and get them out of the street, um, even if it's trees that were planted by a homeowners association uh, that we didn't require or directly plant, but we still have a role for public safety, you know, like we've had these storms in the last uh, snowstorm, there were some trees that fell across streets, obviously Public Works is, their role is to make sure those streets are reopened and, and so that they're passable. For public safety um, so those are situations that um, they're addressed in the the uh, public tree care ordinance but not necessarily under the definition and I think personally I think they're sufficiently addressed in tree removal section of this particular ordinance so um, but again that's that's kind of an overview a long overview of what 
uh, started out uh, as a simple <laughs> amendment to a couple of definitions. Uh, it's kind of evolved into a little bit more detail. Okay, thank you, Mark. I uh, have a motion to approve uh, resolution PC-24-01. Motion to approve. Second. Mark, I think that uh, adding that proposed definition, though, I, th I think that provides the necessary context that we're looking for. And definition. I don't know. I'll open, just open, open up anybody else with any comments or questions for Mark. I have one. Uh, Mayor Williams? Uh, on the public safety part of it, uh, uh, going forward, where are, we, where are we at with the trees that disrupt the sidewalk, make them kind of where they're a trip hazard? That may not necessarily you mean be. like trees that, <clears throat> that were, we didn't plan or require to be planted, but they are too large for the space? Well, just where they approach on the side, the roots approach on the sidewalk and cause the sidewalk to buckle, which is a safety issue. Yeah. Um, you know, those we have to look at on a case-by-case -case basis. I know we have one subdivision where that's, we've, we've worked out an agreement with the Homeowners Association uh, regarding the sidewalk and the trees. They wanted to keep the trees, which I understand, but we can't afford to go in to these areas and redo their sidewalks every few years because they've got trees that were, are too large for the space that they're in at this point. And we, you know, we have a couple other subdivisions that have kind of similar situations, but maybe not to that extent. Um, so in, in those cases um, where it's, if it's becoming a public safety issue, um, then we, I think we certainly have the ability to remove those trees if we feel like that that's the, the best course of action to take. Uh, there's really no way to to uh, remedy the situation without, you know, taking the tree out altogether. And sometimes, unfortunately, that's that's going to be the answer. And tree removal, if it's addressed in this ordinance, uh, does talk about that, and it gives, I think, it gives the town uh, certainly the the latitude to be able to make those decisions because the trees are on the town's property. Uh, you know, if they're in the public right of way, and if we feel like they're creating a a safety hazard because the sidewalk's being buckled and it's a tripping hazard for a pedestrian, then uh, you know, I think we certainly have the ability to go in and take those trees out if, if we had to. Thank you, Mark. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, yeah. 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 We're just, you're saying that the town would be responsible, or not responsible, but the town would be willing to take the tree out. I think if it's creating a public hazard, a safety related issue that we uh, we could do that uh, just like a tree that falls across the road obviously we're going to remove that whether or not it's considered a public tree under this ordinance it's just you know what we have to do that's our role to keep our streets safe same way with sidewalks if we've got trees that are causing massive issues with sidewalks we would uh, you know get with if it's in a subdivision, we'd certainly get with the subdivision to see, uh, you know. Have we done that? Have we had any situations where oh, we yeah, we have, yeah, we have had that. Yeah. Whose responsibility is it to repair that sidewalk in the past? Well, we, we have repaired, we have done some repairs uh, in some of these instances, but then it gets to a point where if you go back multiple times and it just keeps getting worse, then those are situations where the town has basically said, okay, you know, we, if we can't keep doing this because we have other, other areas that we have to maintain. And if you want to keep the trees, then, you know, this is, um, is something that, um, you know, you're going to have to, to maintain in the future moving forward. So I know that we've done that with at least one subdivision in the town. They won't keep it that it falls back on nature. That's right. That's right. I think we can go in and fix it maybe once, but you know, if it just is a recurring issue and it's gonna get worse and worse, then it's you know, there's really not a lot um, that we can do at that point other than giving them the, the decision of whether they want to keep the trees or not. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you, Commissioner. All right, with the discussion closed, uh, I'd like to ask for another motion uh, with the uh, proposed uh, definition. We have a motion to approve with the addition of the marks of the latest proposal for public tree definition. I think you had a motion to say. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't add in the, the proposed definition portion of that, though. Yeah, that's part of it. I think we covered it. In the the latest one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the original motion. That's fine. So okay. mo motion stands with the yes. Mo motion motion stands. So at this time, I'll ask all those in favor say yes. 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 No. 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 Uh, let the record show that uh, uh, resolution PC 24-01 is approved unanimously. And now we can move on to utilities, Mark. I I have none. Uh, no utilities, what's so the time is approximately 8.15 p.m. and without objection, the February, uh, we, we covered that out of, out of order. Uh, this, this, uh, the February 15, 2024 Ferry Municipal Planning Commission meeting is now finished. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.